Welcome to episode 46 of the Movie Lighthouse, shining a light through the fog of film. My name is James. I'm Laurie. And I'm Wyndham. And we are caught in a time loop. Yeah, it's deja vu. Yeah. Chocolate mousse. Yeah. It's cargo. The balls let us down, or maybe my recording system let us down, but we are. Your balls let us down. <laughs> we are doing 2008 again. <laughs> again. <laughs> it was such a good year. Such a good it, year. It needed it doing twice. Anyway, never mind. Um, how How is everybody? Yeah, right. It's been a, it's been uh, life is, I don't know why, but it's just, yeah, it's great. And then it's challenging and I don't know. Yeah. All right. How's, How are you? how's your new addition to the family? Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, I hope it's okay with you guys, but I'm trying a lighthouse trainer, but we've got a, got a Starsky in the house and Starsky is a black dog. They are. Oh, oh, nice. What I kind of nice. a black dog? Everyone keeps asking me that, and I, uh, I still need to get my teeth around it. I think it's a uh, st- st- staff, Steph. No, it's a collie. <laughs> it's a collie and something else. And the something else is the main thing it is. And I keep forgetting. Setter. There you go. Boom. Did it. So your daughter must be <laughs> over the moon. She's over the moon, and then some, yes. and din some. <laughs> Good stuff. And how about you, Wyndham? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, I'd agree that life poses its challenges and that, but I'm, I'm, I'm a qualified yoga teacher now since we last spoke. So. Hey, congratulations. Look at that. Wow. I'm going to be slugging it around this pokey lighthouse forever. And, uh, exactly. I've got, got to think of the future. <laughs> yeah. And uh, me and Wyndham. Not out. too much, though. You could just see us as like a side hobby or whatever. <laughs> me and Wyndham yeah, went out with the producer of um, one of our films this week. Oh, yeah. We- yeah, guy, what's his name? Jasper. Jasper Graham. He's got two names. He's like yeah. bought one, got one free. Like Wyndham. Wyndham and his James. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> but I, was, I, I don't count his first name as like. <laughs> as, yeah. Well, that's just. I'll leave it there. All right. So, God, last. last um, the reason we haven't met for ages is mainly because last time's podcast was such a bloody draw it was unbearable it wasn't a draw it wasn't unbearable but we did we we, 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 we well i was i was blown away by your thoughts on akira you're like well it's all right <laughs> what that absolute <laughs> masterpiece in manga history yes all right anyway uh but then we we obviously did uh graveyard of the fireflies as well which is just just heart-wrenching a, a, yeah, a, well, let's not go over it again. Yeah. We? <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> God, I feel drained. <laughs> <I'm alone. laughs> yeah. oh, has, has anybody got any news before we kick off this yeah. wonderful podcast? Yeah. Hi, hon. How's it going? Nah, my news is all about always about the same thing. So I've been banging on about the same thing for like it feels like three is it years. Star Wars, right? So uh, Star Wars new. It's not Star Wars news. Actually. <laughs> it's about uh, Wes Anderson's film, and I've completely forgot the name of the title now. It's it's basically the love letter that he's made. I think he made it a couple of years ago. It was due for release, I think early this year or maybe even latter part of last year. It's the something something bureau where it's a love letter to the French press. Back in the day, high quality um, information there, Dal. I know, <laughs> I know. Something, I... something bureau. bureau. Where's Anderson? But it, it got a ten minute, well, nine and a half minutes. Can you mime it? Ovation at the Cannes Film Festival. Nine. Well, they and do that all minutes. the time. Do they? Yeah. Just... Are you sure it's not called the French Dispatch? Yeah, there you go. That's what it is. <laughs> that one. <laughs> What's but nine about? and a half minutes. That's going to blister, right? Yeah, right. Mm. Or at least chafe majorly. I bet that, yeah, I bet. Mm. Anyway, uh, what's it about? I can't remember. It's, it's just about like the French press. That's it. You've got your Bill Murray in it. It's a Wes Anderson film. I think I kind of know what it's going to be, but it sounds like it's going to be a really good film. And uh, a bit that's one little Bill bit Murray. It's got, quite a few, it's got quite a few names in it. Uh, yeah. It's got. 
Timothy Chalamet, Owen Wilson, Tilda Swinton, Leah Sidhu, Elizabeth Moss, uh, Benicio del Toro, Bill Murray, Ed Norton, Adrian Brody, Francis yes. McDermott, Willem Dafoe, Christopher mm. Waltz, Liv Schreiber. Bloody hell. No wonder Bloody they were clapping hell. for 10 minutes. Angelica Houston, Henry Winkler, ha! Jeffrey Henry Wright. Henry Winkler! Yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> oh, they're all in it. That's wet your whistle, isn't it? It certainly has. Right. Um, any, any, any other news? I haven't no. got any. It's I haven't been got a, any. Been a bit, bit, a bit dry, really. Yeah, fuck it. Let's be dry. All right. Well, let's just move on to In the Beam. So we're going to talk about a film that we are going to recommend to our fellow friends of the lighthouse. Um, I'm going to start today. Um, oh, I've written two down. I'm a bit like you today, Laurie. Oh. Which one? Say left, uh, left or right? Right. All right. I'm going to choose the. Fi- oh no, I'm not. I'm going to choose Cadaver. So um, it's a film on Netflix. Uh, it is a foreign language film. Um, mm. I hope Wyndham's typing it furiously into the lighthouse computer as we speak to give me some information. Um, but basically it's um, set in like a post-apocalyptic world where there's no food and no entertainment. And so this family get an, uh, an inv- invitation to go to the theatre. And uh, she used to be an actress, so she knows all about the theatre. So they go to the theatre and it's like a, a kind of installation sort of theater, you know, sites are specific where you walk around, but you don't just walk around, you get killed. Um, and then and then you get eaten. So yeah, yeah it's great. It's brilliant. It's really, really so we're in a we're in a world with no food. Yeah. So it's it's in the Thanks. starving aftermath and of a nuclear disaster. Here we go. A family of three attends a charitable event at a hotel which takes a dark turn when mm-hmm. people start to disappear. Mm-hmm. May have given away a bit of a spoiler there, but it is called Cadaver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, it's great. It's really, really very good. Yeah, that does sound good. I'm going to check it out. So when you, what, 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 uh, I'm sure that will be on Netflix. Is it French, did you say? Oh, I don't know. Wind- Do you... Oh, it could be. Uh, I can't maybe. remember. It was, about, it, da- it was ages it ago matter. when I watched it. I can hardly remember it. La Trine, it's, uh, Norwegian. Oh, it's Norwegian. Oh, all right. There you go. I Actually, know no, it, to... just, oh. it just says the language spoken is Norwegian. It could be French, and they're just doing it in Norwegian. Ah. I think or it might be Norway. Norwegian. It looked pretty grim. If I, <laughs> if I say what I'm going to say next in Dutch, can you guess what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Ho, ho, ho. Stop your pardon. <laughs> you know what that is? No. Sounds like... and it... I'll go again. Go, ho, ho, ho. Stop your pardon. Stop your pardon. Stop your pardon. I'm going to say ho, ho, ho is no, no, no. So, no, no, no. Stop talking. Yeah, uh, it's whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your horses. Well, close enough. Yeah. Well Where should you learn that then? <laughs> uh, a desk. <laughs> Great. Um, go on then. What, what have you got? What delights have you got to show us? It is a delight. It's Hammer Horrors, 1974, Captain Kronos, Vampire Slayer. Whoa! Oh. Yeah! Captain Kronos, Vampire Slayer. Yeah, Captain Kronos, Vampire Slayer. So, I bizarrely, I don't know why this film is not more well-known, because obviously Hammer Horror, you know, we all know their kind of films, you know, the Gorgon and, you know, even the... Do Mike we, though? Well, I think we... Well, we this know, one we, we know the kind of flavour of them, but I, I bet you wouldn't be able to name me ten. Do we? Do we do that? Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I think James is expecting it to be a thin episode. Go on, name <laughs> ten hammer horror films. No. We've got thirty seconds. Time starts no. now. No, right. Oh. <clears throat> Captain Kronos, Vampire Slayer. Um, Brilliant. So basically, it's kind of like a little bit like that kind of Clint Eastwood setup. So you've got this blonde guy, a, 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 you know, on his horse, riding into town, and shortly like followed, films that start like that. Yeah, I love that shit. Um, shortly followed by his kind of professor sidekick buddy. He's like a full-on professor scientist guy, and he's in the wagon coming along, and they're coming into town, 
and the town is being uh, plagued by vampires, but you don't know who it is. You've got a bit of a who done it kind of thing going on. There's this wealthy family that lives up on the hill. Is it them? Is it the farmer family? Is it? And um, yeah, it's all swashbuckly. So he's got a sword, but he's got obviously a real history, a past history. I think he's been bitten by a vampire. So he's got certain sort of skills and stuff. Um, and it's just really, really great. Is it so, got any of the top three actors from Hammer? No. So I actually don't really, I, actually the lady, kind of the love interest, I recognise her and I don't really recognise anyone else. Uh, mm, or maybe actually his mate. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they don't, yeah. There's... Is there um, anything, has it got anything to do with time? No. He's it's kind of Captain Kronos. Captain Kronos, yeah. So it's gothicy, swashbuckly. It's got, got comedy in it. Like I say, there's a who done it done it in it. There's that whole sort of Clint Eastwood, the man with no v- name kind of vibe going on. He's it's got, got his side for everybody. It has actually got something for everybody. It's great. And when did you watch this to it as well? Uh, on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was cracking. I take it, it was on DVD. It was on a pen drive. So I've actually, yeah, I stay up a bit late. And um, yeah, these these seagulls, they're, they're delivering. So there we are. Great. Wyndham. So I watched a brand new uh, film. Oh. I think it's on Amazon. I think. Could, yeah, I think it's Amazon. Um, it is the incredible Daniel Radcliffe in Guns Akimbo. Yeah. Oh, I nearly watched that the other day. Which I watched the first minute. So fucking random. It's, it's, it's just a, a really... You kind of sat there going, what? What? So essentially <laughs> there's this underground um, fight club type thing, but it's not a fight club. Schism is the organisation and they just appoint two people to fight to the death. Uh, and it's criminals, supposedly. Um, and our friend Daniel, who it's impossible to look at and not think of Harry Potter. Of course. Um, so our friend Harry is <laughs> works at an advertising agency or something like that. Uh, and he kind of gets online in the evenings and takes the piss out of trolls on the internet. Um, and then oh, he's a he, troll as well. Kind of, yeah. But he's trolling the trolls, right? So, you know. Um, Bottom. But he accidentally trolls schism and they come to his house take him away and bolt handguns to his hands oh right. pitch him into a fight to the death with their most successful winner so far uh and he is not a criminal and he doesn't know what he's doing but every he, he kind of st- he wakes up back, back in his apartment the first thing he's got to do is try and pull his trousers on with two guns bolted <laughs> to his hands it is super weird but it's quite entertaining you know what? Oh. I just want to. I want to. Um, what do you want to? Well do? done to Daniel Radcliffe because he continues to try very hard with the films that he chose uh, chooses. He, um, I saw um, Swiss Army Man the other day. I don't know if you've seen that, where he plays a dead body. He's oh uh, yeah, I've heard about it. I haven't seen it. Very, yeah. very good indeed. You know, he really pushes the bow out to shake off that Harry Potter. That's exactly what he's trying to do. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. what he's trying and to you... do. It's like, please give me something that's going to kind of rinse this out. But... You're going to break his heart when he listens to our podcast. I know. Oh, well. It's good. I mean, he's, he's obviously got the choice. He's not exactly working job to job, is he? I think yeah. he's doing all right. It is. He's a very, very lucky boy. I mean, you know, he wasn't. <laughs> no, I mean, he's trained. he's got this opportunity to do whatever he wants to do, so he can do these wonderfully weird. Only things. for ten years until they made his, he's... Uh, the um, that follow up to the Harry Potter thing that's in theatres at the moment. There's a ten year gap, isn't there, or something? Uh, right. Why the cursed child? Or yeah, is. that will be the last film yeah. he ever makes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's good. It's worth watch. Right on the rocks. Love on the rocks Ain't no surprise Hi. Ain't no surprise Well, I'm uh, going to surprise you all now. Wyndham. Yeah. So I have actually this time seen a really shit film. Uh, well done. Yeah. You know, I figured I've, I was holding the uh, holding fort to begin with and then I let it slip. But yeah. um, another new film 
this time starring Chris Pratt, The Tomorrow War. Oh, I oh right. I saw trailers of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's on Amazon. Concept is from how many years in the future, people pitch up back in the present, kind of go, oh my God, there's an alien invasion. We're losing. We need all of you. We've we've worked out time travel we need to take soldiers from this time forward in time otherwise we're all fucked and you kind of go oh i quite like the premise of that that sounds quite good and then it is absolutely pish <laughs> it it's just rubbish they've got a couple of they've kind of really gone for the it's quite serious but hey there's a, a two or three characters who just drop one-liners the whole time and it's right. it's just reaching and desperately trying to kind of be more than it really is right it's not very good it sounds majorly flawed as well it it's like, is. okay so we're being invaded by aliens so we'll go back in time to get some people to bring them back to the future is that right yeah it just seems a very flawed idea i think if i was people. in that that boardroom yeah. i'd be like should we go back in time and just like figure out a way something else because that seems like a really shit idea yeah uh, <laughs> yeah that, exactly you are sat there throughout the whole film kind of going why, why didn't they did, why what, didn't they do that why, why, yeah well, why did tell them what was going to happen exactly Ugh. yeah and then oh. and then towards the end a, 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 a bit of go on the lottery or something yeah the the resolution to it all is a bit chris pratt's character is a high school chemistry teacher or Ugh. physics teacher or something like that however it's fortunate that he knows people why he knows these people i don't know that at one point he can get hold of a, a transport teacher. plane. No, a, a military transport plane. And oh, wow. All this kind of stuff. It's like, He's wow. got contacts. He yeah. has got contacts, but it's rubbish. Oh, I'm bother. glad you found a sack of shit because we could rely on your. You used to have a sack full. He <laughs> did. Yeah, yeah. Taste it. He's turned up with his big fat sack and it's just like, <laughs> it was empty for ages. Well done. How about yeah, you, good. Laurie? My sack is dry, kids. Is it? Dry. Yeah, I went down there kind of deliberately looking, but nah. Nothing. Right, well, I've got one. Um, Godzilla, King of Monsters. Oh, don't don't say that. Oh, it's just unbearable. Really? It, yeah, it's it's got every cliche under the sun going on. I mean, you know, I'm, it's just a. I don't understand why they make these things. You know, there's there's enough shit out there in the world as as there is, and you know, just adding more. I got to the last to twelve monster. minutes and turned it off. Oh, see, that's infuriating. Yeah, it was just stupid. You know, so you had obviously with loads of monsters this time. You had Mothra, which is a yep. giant moth. Amazing. Yeah, well, the, the, the I much prefer the original Japanese films where they're <laughs> just in suits um, yeah. fighting over like cardboard skyscrapers. Yeah. <laughs> much more interesting, but it was just awful, awful, awful. Really though, I mean, like in the cinema, just really you know, you leave leave your brain at the door, kind of thing. No, just, it's not even no that good. Yeah, it's just it was unbearable. Just oh, okay. Else. All right, okay, all right, okay. And what's that noise? <clears throat> I oh, there's a lambooner. It is a trailer <laughs> trawler chugging into shore. Do we have a shore? Do we have a beach? Sure, we got a shore. Right. Shingly oh. shore. So, um, I've, as I do, I've got a few trailers for us. Um, the new trailer for The Candyman is out. That is coming out very soon in August, and we're all going to see it as a little ex trip. You'll be pleased to know. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, in August, nice. huh? Um, so that's brilliant. It looks very good. I think they're going to do a remarkable job of that, I'm hoping. Um, and then the other one I have seen is Halloween Kills. Um, uh, so We certainly need another Halloween movie. Well, I agree. We really don't need another Halloween movie, but whoever made the trailer, hats off to them, because it really, really works as a trailer. Pulls you in, it really makes you want to see the film. Oh, wow. Cool. They've kind is of it, it, got to it... the point on IMDb with the Halloween movies where they, in their pricey, they don't even bother now. It's the saga of Michael Myers and Laura Strode continues in the next thrilling chapter of the Halloween series. There but you go. The <laughs> eagle eyed viewer of the trailer would have noticed three children murdered in Halloween Three Masks. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, the silver shamrock right yeah, there. Yeah, it's got a little oh. uh, nod to that, which I thought it's was got nice. Anthony Why Michael Hall in it as well. It's good to see him working again. He was the, the young dude from um, Breakfast Club and Weird Science. And oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those what films ago. The ginger hair kid. Ca- the kind blonde of, kid. Blonde kind kid, yeah. Blondie gingery, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's old now. Yeah. Is um, it? Yeah, he's back working, which is nice. episode of... Um, that 80s program I was watching, which I can't remember yeah. the name of anymore. Yeah, he's put up his last flat roof and he's back acting. Bergerac. <laughs> Bergerac. Right, let's get on because oh, we need... I've got a trailer trawler. And uh, what? What? Go on, then. What have you got? Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah. Oh, I haven't New seen Suicide it. Suicide Squad. Uh, directed by James Gunn. It's got all of the... It's got loads of big names in it. Margot Robbie's back. Viola Davis is back. Idris Elba is in it. Joel Kinnaman is back. And essentially... Peter I think Capaldi. They... Is he? Oh, yeah. Not that far. Uh, but essentially, I think... D- We've had this conversation about DC and Marvel and their different approaches. Yes, it um, is. And they've evidently, like we said, they've just gone, we've got to make it funny. We've got to lighten it here. So they've got no. Shark Man. Ooh. They've got Shark Man. Lots of yeah. one-liners. It's all a bit slapsticky. Yeah. But Who that's Marvel, man. Go down? DC, well, fingers crossed it goes well for them, but I mean, like, I think, nah. DC, I think that they, they're, they're darker stuff, they're darker edgy stuff. I think that works. And when they try and do the kind of marvel y, ha ha, this, I this doesn't land. I'm not sure if they're trying to do the Marvel thing. I think what DC seemed to do is just like a scattergun approach. So, mm. every, you know, there's no kind of, like with Marvel films, there is a consistency. But with DC, you know, you've got things like the Joker. And they've gone, oh, well, that works. Wonderful. Really. Fucking and then you've great, got, yeah. all, you know, the awful Superman films. But Joker's not really DC, is it? I think well, we're giving them a little DC. bit of t- credit that they, yeah, not really, really. Well, 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 why is it not? I don't know, actually. It it's is. not their studio, is it? It's so <laughs> No, but it's, it's their character, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. This has got the American wrestler, the WWE superstar, John Cena. In it. Oh yeah, he's yeah. got he's got a really like he meaty head. He plays Christopher Smith. Oh, that's a bit of an anticlimax. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think it's, it's... Davis, though. she's good. She is. Margot Robbie's very good. She is very good, but I wonder if three's a charm or three's three's a crowd, isn't it? Yeah, it might be a crowd now. Yeah. You know? Well, we'll see. We'll see. All right, is that everything, Wyndham? <laughs> is that actually everything? Uh, yeah, go on then. Great. All right, let's get on with the feature. I'm so excited to talk about 2008. Again! Yay! All right, so let me give you a little bit of information about what happens when mistakes happen. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Um, on TV. Are you just going back to your old notes? No. On TV, a big mistake was El Dorado. Oh, <laughs> uh, only lasted a year. I quite liked it, but nobody else did. Um, some mistakes in music are No Limit, Two Unlimited, Cotton Eye Joe, and anything with a saxophone solo. Um, right, some mistakes uh, for people who died. Sonny oh. Bono skied into trees and died. A bit of a mistake. Whoops. Uh, Elvis famously died on the toilet, even though everybody tries to deny that. That's coming out soon, isn't it? Is it next year or something? Yeah, yeah. We're um, going to find out. Well, Elvis's autopsy. Absolutely. And Mama Cass Elliot died because of a sandwich, which actually isn't true, but everybody thinks it is. So we will continue that myth. What sandwich? Ham. <laughs> Ham, yeah. All right, so let's talk about the ones that got away. We had Hellboy 2. Yeah, so you actually said... The Golden Hellboy. Army. You said Hellboy. But if you'd said Hellboy 2, you might have tickled me... Tickled me... Fancy? Thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't get my penis out of my mind. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, so I might have been more inclined to go for that. But actually, no, I'm very glad... I stuck with what we what we had, but yeah, Hellboy two, really good film actually. I really enjoy Hellboy. Yeah, I like it. I like the first two Hellboys um, yeah. better than the the, the, the remake. Uh, Second one's better than the first one. Well, yeah, I guess so. And um, <laughs> Dave the Earth stood still. 
Is that but the bullshit one? Is that the one the with Charlie was... Reeves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, we don't need to talk about that. So, um, the first film we are going to review tonight is Let the Right One In. Um, it was released in 2008. It was directed by Thomas Alfredson. The author was John Lindvist. The screenplay was by the same guy. Music, Johan Soderqvist. The budget was 4.5 million US dollars. It made at the international box office 11.2 million US dollars. Well done, guys. And let's have a clip. Do you want to do notable actors? No, not really. Like, I'll just say the first. Um, right, Kale Hedebrandt as Oscar, Lena Lee Anderson as Ellie. That'll do. That'll do. Great. And um, lots of other good people. Yeah. Uh, Laurie, give us a synopsis. Uh, okay. Oscar, he's looking out his window. He's got a runny nose and got a squeal, piggy, squeal, piggy. I think he's being bullied. I think he's being bullied. He's got really cool hair. That's amazing hair. Um, and then uh, a little girl and her, whoever he is, you think it's you know, dad, I maybe, know what you're doing. I've worked Who's in out. next door. You're doing that thing that you can turn on that, that what's it called? The AD button on your remote control, which tells uh, visually challenged people audio what's description. going on. <laughs> audio description. That's what you do. You don't give yeah. us this. You give the audio description. Yeah. <laughs> Is that not right? <laughs> and she she moves in and they kind of become buddies, this, that, and the other. But wait a minute. She's a vampire. She's, she's, she has to go around. She has to feed. But she's quite remorseful about it. She's not, you know, like over the moon and got killed. But And her, like, the guy that's with her, he, he's kind of going out and trying to get her blood and stuff like that. Anyway, and it goes on and they perform this lovely, beautiful relationship. And there's a bit of bullying going on. da 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 and yeah, it's kind of a love story, kind of friendship story, kind of a bully story, kind of a vampire story. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah. Mm. Wynn, what do you think? I, I think it's excellent. Really, really had, good. Had you seen it before? No. I'd, oh! I'd seen, I'd maybe seen, I don't know why, but I'd only seen about 20, the first 20 minutes of it before. And I don't know why I didn't continue with it. Um, but yeah, it the really, really, really enjoyed it. I, I, it did kind of make me go, uh, uh, <laughs> every time I saw him licking his snot. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> Really, really good. Really enjoyed it. Brilliant. Um, how about you, Laurie? I take it you've seen this one before? Yeah, yeah. I think I watched it soon after it first landed on DVD and yeah, I really loved it. It's a charming little film. Acting's really, really great. Obviously, the idea is really good fun. Um, it'll be it. It's not my kind of vampire, but that's fine. I'll forgive it because it's just so sweet and lovely. Brilliant. I saw this at the cinema. Um, massive fan when it came out and it hasn't lost any of its charm for me. Um, watching it again, I loved it. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a really nice, refreshing take on the whole um, vampire thing. I mean, um, would Eastern Bloc be the right kind of description of this kind? Of I would say absolutely, yes. A no, cold they're, one. It's, they're Scandinavian, aren't they? But it's got that whole kind of communist... It's, it's got that Austerity of yeah Scandinavia, but not. Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I guess. So. Go. I'm uh, gonna say no, no, not at all. Actually, well, I don't want to offend anybody. It's really? Rubbish, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's lots of snow in it, and like concrete and stuff like that, and lots of jackets, and lots of you see lots of breath, and obviously running noses and stuff like that. Um, it's got a very clear style. I think the style is key in this film isn't it like i was mm. saying um, with the with the snow with the architecture with with the color palette really because it's quite colorless i guess yeah that's yeah true. i've got austere brutal beauty in Ooh. my notes yeah i'll check that out yeah. that. wow 
It's, it's, sorry, I'm just trying to... It's been ages since I saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at my notes too. <laughs> right. Well, the th- one of the things that I thought was quite interesting that you never see in kind of usual films about kind of A, coming of age or kind of vampire stuff, really kind of focused on the kind of quirky, awkward adolescence of these kids. Mm-hmm. Which was quite disturbing in itself, really, I thought. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. Oscar's being bullied, you know, and you, you really kind of get close to him, and you understand him, and he is a bit, he is a bit of a wally, but, you know, you, you kind of get where he, he's coming from. Um, he's got some macabre interest, though, hasn't he? He's got this scrapbook of murders and stuff like that that the, 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 the story doesn't really go too much into. Well, it's, well this... that's what happens. People who get really bullied turn into murderers, don't they? Well, yeah, yeah, and that's ah, oh, yeah, of course. And they, when you start thinking about obviously where that character was now going on to, where you see that last shot, it's like, or much you as much as you love him and her, you know, this this lovely relationship they've got, it's actually like, oh god, that's going to get dark. That's yeah. going to be really freaking dark. It's going to um, be without. Well, I'm jumping massively ahead, but the pair Ragnar character well he's the actor who plays Huckan who is the kind of who you think is a father. old man you think is her father yeah suddenly it's like oh fuck Oscar is just him yep in yeah. so what age was that bloke when he encountered Ellie yeah 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 and that was that was a very nice touch um I mean god nobody has a very good time in this film at all do they no <laughs> and it is it is absolutely one of those films that just underlines again and again that kids are fuckers <laughs> <laughs> they're just awful he's poor poor little oscar his parents have separated well yeah he's not a fucker is he well by the well, end of it, he is he, well, he, yeah, he's got right. a you know book of murders and uh you know he he's a quite a violent little thing fucker, fucker in the making yeah 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 but he, he has to put up with his trousers being put in a urinal and pissed on he has to walk home in his pants and it's sweden in the middle of winter so it's cold mm-hmm. and well, he kids coming up to him killer, shouldn't he? saying squeal little piggy or i'll stab you well That's it. Yeah. and then ellie there she is she's on the climbing frame um in that beautiful kind of snow again and they have that little chat and is that the first meeting where he's got his little rubik's cube and he's like yeah you can have it she yeah. goes off and, mm. and don't we, we don't puzzle. actually see her jump onto the climbing frame, do we? We just hear it, I think. She, she just appears, but when yeah. she jumps down, again, there's this lovely little detail where, she, you know, when, as she jumps down, it's almost like half floating, half kind of jumping. Very subtle, but you can say that that yeah. wasn't normal. Um, and and, and hats off to her acting as well, because I noticed oh, she, had to, um, she had to do that scene without any shoes on. Um, in the snow, and that reminds me of the time that I was an extra in Le Miserable when right. they didn't give me any shoes for the whole fucking night shoot that I had to do, um, <laughs> even though I was right at the back and no one could see us. Uh, and Did I, you have to have your pies out? Were your pies out all night? All night. And I was next to this guy who every time the guy said action, he came and pushed me. I was going, what the fuck? What are you doing? <laughs> so I'm not even in the shot. It's like, yeah, we've got to be raucous. It's like, we'll be raucous somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> no fun. In Poor me. James. Yeah, well, she she suffered it, you know, this, yeah, this, this so actress. Like she was, she was amazing. in shot, though, right? She was in shot, yeah. She yeah. Was, yeah. yeah she got to and barefooted. Yeah. But yeah, these big grey eyes, I think they may have just slightly enhanced them, maybe digitally. I don't think they sure. did. I don't, I don't think they would have had the technology to do that. I've, I mean, do you mean by with makeup? I don't know. I mean, oh, you could, could give a contact eyes. lenses. Well, no, no, yeah, there were there were sort of techniques going on where they would kind of manipulate an eyes. You know, remember like uh, I doubt Black they Eyed know. Sun or whatever it is by Soundgarden, I think. That had a big eye moment. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Um, that would have yeah, cost you know, shit great. loads to do. He's got a big bubbly nose, which I love. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's because there's a there's a real kind of sparseness or matter of fact to this film. So it's just the characters are just doing what they're doing and you're in these situations. So, you know, obviously the guy that's looking after Ellie, he has to go out and, you know, get blood. And you watching this, how he what he has to do, like the first murder, I think he just if you've got the time or something like that to one of these night walkers and then he sort of gasses him 
but then obviously now he's got to get the blood out so he kind of tie oh, he's tying the body up hanging it upside down he's got to get the bucket and as it cuts the throat and it's just all very kind of it's quite procedural it's kind of like it's almost funny uh, mm. and then and then he gets it gets kind of interrupted and it's like, oh, oh shit bollocks and just like runs off and forgets the blood and he's like oh bollocks and then his next attempt where he's in the school and he's got the guy up there and he's like, right, okay. And he's I wonder just... how he got through this long, really. Being... <laughs> yeah. It's getting a bit old, bless him. His skills, of, his skills yeah. are failing him. And then he kind of, his mates are like, well, where's, where's Antonio or whatever? And they come in and interrupt him. He's like, oh, bollocks, I've cocked it up again. And it's just like, oh, bless. But there's a, there's a real kind of matter of fact, I suppose. I suppose the bullies, the bullies go into that little bit of, you know, the bullies you know it's kind of it's a little bit oh fuck off mate but you know bullies can I maybe be absolute horrendous did we find this film horrific or disturbing or both or neither I didn't find it horrific I don't think I did is did no. it shock you did it scare you did it repulse you no no oh. so it's, what... it's kind of it yeah, it's a good question because it's a film that has all of those kind of. It's a relationship film that has a vampire in it, mm. and it's all the different relationships you kind of see throughout. So there's a group of old men and their his girlfriend who go out and get drunk every night, but don't do really anything else. And yeah, yeah. And then he's only got one drunk. person. Yeah, he's it's only. What happens when a vampire comes to a really boring town? Maybe. Yeah, and it's the the relationship between Ellie and um, Hacken that even when he fucks up again, realises he's not going to get away, his first instinct is to pour acid on his own face oh, so, that, yeah. so that he cannot be identified so they won't link it to her. Yeah. So he's just protecting her yeah. at all costs. Um, you've got the re weird relationships with Oscar and his parents. Mm -hmm. And then he goes off to stay with his parents for a little bit. And that weird bit where his father that bloke comes around for yeah, just yeah, randomly yeah. pitches up. So you, it, so it just hints at so much of the background without right. going into any of it. And yeah, it just leaves that, that, that in your really mind and to it, percolate. And it kind of does that with some of the action as well, doesn't it? Because there's that bit where uh, the guy gets killed in the uh, bedroom, is it? And you just see it through the crack, is it, of the door? When he goes into the flat and he finds her yeah. laying in the bath. Yeah, yeah. So this uh, yeah. is the this is the best mate of the, yeah. the guy but you she don't kills. See her what's first going on? Kill. You just hear it all, don't you? Yeah. You just see yeah. it. Because off, but Oscar's yeah. followed him in and is is getting ready to do him in. Yeah, he's gonna to protect her. Yeah. But then he wakes her up instead, and she does the doing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you say, like it kind of touches on some really dark stuff, and you don't really kind of. It doesn't go too far in it, but like you, you say the bit where he visits his dad and he's having a lovely night with his dad. They're playing some game or whatever, and they're chatting, they're talking with each other, and then his mate turns up. So obviously his mate's his drinking buddy. So the minute that turns up, dad starts, you know, cracks out the vodka, starts smoking. They obviously start Don't doing blame them, talking mate. shit. I'm talking <laughs> shit, and then Oscar's just like sat there, just watching them going. Mm, mm. But, just, but his know, mate's got a got a wrong look about him. Yeah, yeah. And that, just, uh, everything's a little bit wrong about this film. And yeah. There is some sort of like child, and there's kind of this. It's almost touching on Peter video. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's it's disturbing. Yeah. I I, I wrote a lot about the makeup. Um, I think I think an excellent makeup person, whoever it was. We yeah. Know. Yeah. Do you think that was real snot? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. They're usually <laughs> quite fussy about things like that. They don't like yeah. allow you to have real mud. You have to have pretend mud. I tell you, there, there's a really amazing moment where Oscar he wants to, um, he kind of, well, you know, look, Blood Brothers, where you kind of, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're loyal to each other forever now, and you cut your hand and you, and you share blood. So he does that. He does that. Well, the vampire wouldn't do that. And then Ellie's like, "Oh my god!" And she, she goes down, and then if, if, only a few times they're very specific you know they hold back on you know doing like you know high 
uh, like effects moments or you know kind of you know obvious vampire stuff in this film they really do reserve it back but you get this little scene she's you don't quite see it but her tongue's coming out all like, blah, 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 frantically licking up the blood but what's really great is when she looks up at him and she's this old woman she's this old thing and you just see it just for like it's almost yeah. not even a second it's like whoa what was that and that's and that what she like really is. That's how old she really is, I guess. Well, yeah, she's probably a lot older than that. But it's like there's much more to this than what you think. You know, you're a beautiful, you're a little cute girl. No, no, oh. no, 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 it's not that. So that again, that kind of ties into all the other little things that go, are going on in this film. You think it's that, but actually, it's a lot, a lot, lot maybe more sinister, I suppose. Something Apart that... from the obvious bully shit. Something I didn't like was the music. I thought it was intrusive and over sentimental. Oh no, I really like I really like the music actually. So I've got the the opening with like the large orchestra. There's loads of stuff going on, and then you've got a lot of piano as well, like really kind of reserved, tender piano. Little yeah, strings. Thought... And then you've got some really funny. What was this film? Norwegian? Sorry, Swedish. Swedish. You got this really great kind of sixties Swedish, almost like a Euro uh, Eurovision song. That he's dancing to you remember yeah. that? It's it's really cool uh, tune. I like the music to this. <sighs> right. Well, I think I'm finished with my notes. Wow. Anyone else got anything? There was a great Does cat it attack. Stand up today, fourteen years later. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. That whole kind of Ginia or Ginia Ginny. Who is the girlfriend of the guy oh, whose mates get killed? Very good. She she gets so Ellie has uh, the guy who's looking after Ellie has fucked up and get, gets caught, goes to hospital with his acid melted face. Ellie goes to hospital and helps him out of the fifth floor window at his request yeah. to protect her. Um, she's still hungry, so she's just dropping on people trying to eat them. Drops on Ginny. Bites Ginny, doesn't kill her. Gets so interrupted. Ginny yeah. starts to turn, and that whole bit, her little kind of degeneration yeah. into the point where she just catches fire yeah, when yeah, yeah. sun touches her skin. I just love that whole little sequence. So you're saying the it's... best cat attack ever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's great. I mean, that is actually a bit of a feature of the lighthouse, by the way. Cat attack. It used to. It used to be a thing. We've we, we've been sparse for a while, but we need to bring it back. What? We meet, we need more cat attack. What 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 other cat attacks are we? Seeing? There, there's been loads of cat attacks. There was, I think, it was Reanimator or whatever it was. Yeah, with the cat attacks. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the, the incredible, the incredibly shrinking man, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, cat ah, attack. yeah. Yeah. We've got loads of cat attack, man. <laughs> but um, that scene, that that whole bit for her, like I said, this film reserves itself in a way with the whole vampire stuff. It doesn't go for the obvious stuff, but that bit they ha really have some fun. I mean, even the bit where actually the, the hospital, like you see one of the nurses walking out of the hospital and you see the, the, the shot of the building. And then all of a sudden sh you see Ellie climbing up. Yeah. The front well, she's halfway the... up, isn't she, when the shot That's broadens it. out, but yeah. she's stationary, so you don't notice yeah, it. And then she starts moving. So yeah, I, that, little brilliant direction. Brilliant. It's yeah. a fun and, they and have, the... not too much of it. Yeah, and, and the, other, the other big one is when Oscar rescinds her invite into his flat and she says, well, you have to oh, invite yeah. him in. And yeah, he says, yeah, well, yeah. what if I don't? And to prove her yeah, kind of love in. for him, she walks in and the effect of her just skin splitting and blood yeah. coming out of her. And he goes, no, 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 you, 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 you can come in, you can come in. And she kind of starts healing. But yeah, there are only two or three of those vampire moments. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit That's like the, grem the third Gremlins rule, isn't it? It doesn't really make sense when you hold it up to a lot of scrutiny. Well, it does in this, though. It shows you exactly what the shit goes down. No, but why? Why Why would that be? And what's the boundary line? And, you know, does a garden count? <laughs> <laughs> does know. the garden count? No, the garden doesn't count. All right, any memorable lines? I haven't got any. I mean, it is in Swedish. Yeah. So it would, it would just be... Uh... <laughs> the end is good, though. Are we Are going to talk about the end? Um, yes, we will yes. talk about the end. Who wants to go first about the end? I can't remember the end. What happened at the end? <laughs> so <laughs> Oscar is dancing to a re again another great piece of music, <laughs> but he's the little tape player going acting like a rock. Oh, I remember now. He's on the train. Like, opening his, you know, when you do that with the water in, in swimming pool, you're opening your mouth and you're just like in, half in your mouth and you're going. Uh, uh. Anyway, 
he, he he's in the pool, he's right? So I mean, good. He's pool, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's in a swimming exercise. pool yeah. doing kind of aquarobics. <laughs> aquarobics, yeah, to a yeah. great track. Idiot. And drinking and far the... too much of other people's urine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then the bullies come in and then they kind of hold his head under the water. Well, it's the bullies and one of their older brothers. That's yeah. it. So the stakes are, have risen. Yeah. And the, the, old, the older brother says, uh, I'm going to hold your head under for four minutes. Something yeah, like three, 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 three minutes. Three. Uh, if you can hold your breath for that long, then fine. So you get it from Oscar's perspective as his head gets pushed under and he's trying to be super calm. And then he, you see the hand on top of his head. And then suddenly there's stuff happening. You can just see above the water. Yeah. And, just... and then an arm falls in next to him like it's out of Jaws. Yeah, and then suddenly there's just fucking carnage going on, and body parts and a head. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. It kind of pops it, up, it's, and it's there's just dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> it's actually flawed that scene. I won't want to. Oh, yeah, well, I will Don't say. Don't ruin it. Why is it flawed? Well, the, the way the guy's standing, like uh, big big brother bully, he's Fingers holding his head around. down. So you'll see his yeah, his hands the wrong way round. Plus, as well, if a vampire come in, he's holding his head down the thing. And they're killing all these kids all around him. Why is he still holding this? It'd be like, frozen in I'm terror. out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's frozen in terror. That's what it is. But yeah, the hands all the wrong way around and everything. So it's a bit flawed, that bit, but it, cinematically. Oh, you've got to forgive it's, it. It's really great. You've got to forgive Completely it. forgive it. Completely forgive it. And then obviously, the real ending, mm. you then see obviously Oscar, he's left home, he's on the train, and he's, he's they've, they've learned Morse code. They used to talk through the wall with Morse code, didn't they? And he's obviously tapping to Ellie on the on the the box that she's obviously hiding. Yeah, he's got a lot. And it's very of... sweet. Yeah, well, you think, he's... oh, that's lovely. And then you start thinking a little bit longer as the time yeah. comes out, going, oh fuck. Prison that's... sentence for him. Really bad. Um, but, has uh... anyone seen the um, American remake? No, no. Don't be daft. Great. All right, should we score it then? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Wyndham performances. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Performances seven. Laurie. Uh, eight. Seven. Effects, Laurie. Uh, eight. Um, I'm sorry, I'll have to go clockwise and I've just started off. I'll do that bit again. Ooh. Effects, Laurie. <laughs> seven. Wait a seven. Nine. Plot, nine, Laurie. Uh, eight. Seven. Rewatch factor, Laurie. Uh, seven. Four. Eight. Direction, Wood. Eight. Eight. Oh, no, seven. nine. Sorry, nine. Seven. Great. Cinematography, ten. Wow, Laurie. you really like this film. Well, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Really. Um, eight. Nine. Wow. Sound of music, Laurie. Uh, seven. Nine. Three. <laughs> Original... <laughs> Originality. Window. Seven. Nine. Seven. Enjoyability. Nine. Laurie. Seven. Uh, um, Wyndham, you were... Mine was six. Okay. A love changing past or present... Laurie. Uh, two. Ooh. Zero. Ooh. Five. Okay. Ooh. So... <laughs> That's what we were doing. Right. <laughs> um, I give it 77. 77. I give it 64. Mm. Oh. Did something there that I think sixty-one. Sixty-one. This is a grand total of sixty-seven point three recurring. I love a recurring. I mean, just when does it end? Okay, oh. so on our twenty twenty-one leaderboard, that puts it um, in fifth place, just below Moon, but above Freddy's Revenge. Um, and on our bigger leaderboard, our all-time scoreboard... Must be getting congested around the 67 yeah, it mark. it ages to update this nowadays. Freddy's Revenge is really good, by the way. 
Okay, well, it is in 30 uh, it places, number 35, kind of. I haven't quite updated this. <laughs> but it is above an American werewolf in London, walking no. and they live. And it is below Black Christmas. There we go. So it is amongst friends. Good. Great. Great. Let's move on to our second feature, Pontypool. All right. So it was released in 19... Up at 88? No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 2008. Um, the director was Bruce McDonald. Uh, the author was Pontypool Changes Everything by Tony Burgess. The screenplay was by Tony Burgess. The music was by Claude Foisy. International box office, 32 million. I couldn't find the budget, strangely enough. Uh, Did you say 32 million? International box office, yeah. Right. Jesus, okay. Budget was estimated to be one and a half million. There we go. And uh, it gets 84% of Rotten Tomatoes. And the producer was Jasper Graham. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Wow. As actors, Stephen McCatty as Grant Mazzy. Lisa Hall as Sidney Bryan. Georgina Riley as Laurel and Drummond. Harat Olianak as Dr. Mendes. Rick Roberts as Ken Loney. Boyd Banks as Jay. Tony Burgess as Tony. And Rachel Burns as Colin. Let's have a clip. What you are hearing is an actual radio broadcast. It is the only recording of the event. Roadblocks preventing people from leaving and entering the area. Everybody is under quarantine. Blood! Blood! We still do not have an official version of these events, and it's very difficult at this moment to get a fix on what has happened. <laughs> They are, hey, hey! Give us a little synopsis. <laughs> so Jasper Graham produced this. Like, ba, this can't be any good. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, I, opening titles, very good. So, what you got? You've got like a sound wave. You know, when you visually see the sound wave going, wah, wah, there's a lost cat in Pontypool, and you're watching the sound wave go, blah, 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 blah. and then there's this void, this kind of hole, this black hole kind of starts ripping through the, the the voice the sound wave of the voice what the fuck's that a, a drop of water next minute anyway you're in a car with macy it's winter outside he hates the winter and um as he's driving along some woman or whatever oh for god's sake you're just <laughs> telling them people the film it's not the synopsis at all <laughs> it's about a virus that infects a local town and making a local radio station uh, become under siege and how they get out of it. Yeah, right. Something like that, yeah. You're not doing these anymore. When the, you're from now on, you're doing the synopsis. Oh, I like the... The, the, it's not the, funny the sound anymore. wave, the sound wave of the voice and that void, that, that thing that appears in the voice. What's that? What's that? And that's the virus. So this is a brand new take on the zombie apocalypse. We've stopped! Stop! Mm. Don't do any more. Oh, sorry, what did you think of it? <laughs> Jasper Graham, Pajir, this is going to be a right sucker to... Oh, my God, this is really good. I'm really enjoying this. I think this is great. Yeah, I, I was, I was thoroughly trepidatious, to be honest, when we started watching it. Trepidatious? Oh, yeah. Because I thought... We're sponsored by that word today. <laughs> this thought, episode is sponsored it, it is by... Shit. What are we going to do? Are we going to lie? What, what, what are we going to do? No, of course we wouldn't lie. Um, I did actually I did actually have this as my in the beam. You on did? Episode two or three, I think. Yeah. Oh, and when you said it, I was like, oh, bless Wyndham. Bless him. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I'm checking out that crap. <laughs> and I knew you hadn't. So when it came up as we were doing 2008 <laughs> again, I thought, yeah. you know, get it in. Good man. I've got no, to it's say, absolutely superb. A very original film. In yeah. it, in it. 
it's, it reminds me of one of those kind of films like where you've stayed up a little bit too late and you, your parents don't quite know and you you know you, you've got BBC Two on and they've played a film that you've kind of never really heard of before you've kind of got an idea it's kind of a horror and you just watch it and it's like where the fuck's this going it's yeah. one of the, it's one of them films like oh wow it's not you know it's not earth shatteringly amazing I mean Macy that actor is you can tell right from the beginning he's no you know um, uh, Lawrence Olivier as it were his acting's a little bit like. Uh, but it's great. You kind of follow it on really original idea with the whole zombie apocalypse thing, which bizarrely, it's just you'd think it would be completely tired by now. But yet again, another idea is it's, it's, it's the English language, basically through that something's happened that's infected language and it, it can be transmitted to people. And you, you kind of when I think the concept is if you understand a word, when you understand it, that's how the virus can get in. So the only way to kind of, well, there's kind of like a cure that, that they discover a little bit later on in the film, but very, very interesting. So it's very like a fucked up version of Call My Bluff. <laughs> 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 right, so just before we get into the film, um, I know it's a few cliches here, um, and I just wondered if you could add to my list. So I've got here, there are certain things that you must never do if you find yourself in a movie. Okay, one is reach for an object whilst driving. I don't think right. I've ever seen that work out well. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, go outside to investigate the strange sound. Yeah. Yeah. Work out well. And read aloud any ancient texts warning of great evil or impending doom. <laughs> <laughs> because the last line is always, don't read this out loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are the others? Or is that it? All right, let's get on with the review then. <laughs> Misery guts. I'm trying to lift, lift the fun. <laughs> you are so lifting. Uh, all right, what are the performances? Time. Let's start with our resident DJ. Resident so Stephen McHattie as Grant Mazzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was great. Yeah. I thought he he's so his his character is he's an essentially he's an ex big time shock jock like radio Bayo. DJ. Yeah, uh, he's and he's Maverick, obviously a loose he, Yeah, so he's happy to report stuff that has no basis in truth, and he's just whipping people up into a frenzy, very current. Um, and he's been he's been booted out, and the only job he can get is in this tiny little town of Pontypool <laughs> in Ontario, and he he cannot. He's a drinking heavily, and he just can't cope with it. It's he like, can't like, bring it down, can he? I mean. That bit with He's like, literally talking about Honey the Missing Cat. Has it been murdered? <laughs> Has it been sacrificed? We don't know. There's no uh, evidence to contradict that. I love the bit where they were saying about, let's go to the eye in the sky. And they go, you do realise he's just in a car, don't you? <laughs> Get in the chopper. Get yeah. in the chopper. In the yeah, sunshine yeah. chopper. That's it. Yeah. So anyway, so Ken, Ken calls in, doesn't he? And he's like, there's... I, I I I see here it was the the, the pharmacy or something, some mm. the doctor. It was a doctor's surgery, surgery yeah. The, the hundreds and hundreds of people were just swarming on it, and they're like, "What?" And then obviously, as a viewer, you're like going, "Huh? That's, what?" It does genuinely seem a little bit weird. Um, and then they oh. start spilling out of the roof. Apparently, Ken's saying, "It's like, what the fuck's going on here?" So you're well basically in the radio studio just listening to these strange reports coming in yeah you yeah. were i wasn't quite sure who to trust whether you know he was talking nonsense or not really um you know whether the guy who was hiding away from all this was starting to become infected or not you were kind of it's kind of edge of your seat stuff really i thought about at what point yeah. you're gonna start talking nonsense yeah so yeah and you were with only three people in the in the in the recording you know radio studio as it were so it's all a bit strange at this point and then um Lawrence and the Arabians turn up uh, they're doing a Bid Laden musical so they start doing this great song oh I thought that was cruel <laughs> yeah and then but what the little girl she like goes uh, 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 she can't remember I can't remember how it ends and then she says like pra Prague, 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 Prague. She keeps repeating herself. It's like, what the fuck's going on here? Um, and then as it slowly unfolds, that's when you kind of keeps getting more and more bizarre reports coming in from Ken in the chopper. And um, all right, what did, what yeah. did you like about it? I, what I I really like the fact that it is set in essentially two locations, either inside the sound booth, which mm. is 
soundproof or at the um producer's desk which is just outside the sound booth it's in this kind of old church yeah. um you have a little bit of him in the car not very much you have a little bit of them looking out the front door and deciding it was a stupid idea but essentially it's in this soundproof contained no windows middle of the night they cannot confirm anything so it's like we're just getting these stories in and have we got anybody on we've got yeah. the police to tell us and so you, like you were saying you don't know who to trust because he's proven he's happy to whip the bullshit yeah. up and they also don't trust each other do they in this studio yeah, absolutely and it's just this really nice setting that is like oh that's quite mm -hmm. you wouldn't have and then actually to go outside it's too frightening to go outside to mm. find out so mm. you just suddenly your world is now not only is it physically very small you you've bound yourself to it because you're too frightened to go outside yeah and then bizarrely dr mendez turns up the yeah. actual guy who turns up and there's a bit of comedy going on but he kind of he kind of, kind of now brings us closer to what the fuck's going on it's it's this it's language it's the english language which is kind of going in well, don't they get the warning in french or something yeah so it's, yeah 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 which i thought was a nice touch only because i've written it down yeah it was good but it was um that was that's your kind of ancient text, isn't it? So it's all in French saying there's something in the English that language. It, do yes. not do it. Blah 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 blah, <laughs> blah 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 blah. Whatever you do, don't read this out loud. Oh yeah, crap. And then, and then they're, they're trying to communicate in French, aren't they? At one point, which I thought was quite funny. There is humour in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, certainly a lot more than uh, let the right one in, which didn't have any humour. I don't think. Oh no. no, he definitely has bits in it, but yeah, not much. Yeah, it's really, really good fun. Surprising, you know, just a great little setup. Ah, uh, yeah. But, right, so I'm just reading a note here where it's like, it's terms of endearment, they kind of figure out that it's terms of endearment in English. So when he was broadcasting Honey the Missing Cat, honey's a term of endearment. So anyone who interpret understood the use of honey, oh, that could also mean like a loved one. That's then when the infection starts kicking in. Oh, right. so there's a lot. So there he, is a logic to it. He would have been part Told of the you, yeah, this synopsis at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The synopsis he, he at the beginning. Part, the back he was responsible. Yeah, your Partly synopsis at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm good at synopsisizing. <laughs> um. All right. What else? I recommend it. It's good fun. If you haven't seen it, go watch Ponty Paul. Really, really good fun. It's one of those films that you'd never heard of before. Check it out. It's good. Right, yeah, it, it does. It does cool. require a little bit of when Mendoza pitches up. It does require a good five minutes of exposition from him to catch everybody up on what's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you just have to kind of accept that's, that. That's, that's what you love about it. It's that yeah. kind of film. Yeah. But it's, it's, a fine. it's a tough concept to get your head around as yeah, well. And you absolutely. can easily kind of get to that and go oh this is just bollocks this nonsense you know but you kind of buy into it yeah um, does anyone remember midnight caller yeah of course used to love it yeah me too what was and his then... saying at the end what was his sign off see you later <laughs> <laughs> oh no fucking 40 years ago there's um uh, there's a really good book called um lexicon by max barry Mm. Uh, it was, I, I was wondering whether it was before or after this, but it was it was published in 2013, so it follows this. But it has a similar concept that there are these things called where words, as in werewolf, but where words. And oh, if yeah. you can possess it and say it, then you can get anybody to do anything. And it's just a kind of, it's not the same concept, but it's it, sorry, it's not the same premise, but it's a similar kind of concept. Yeah. So if anybody is desperate for a good book, lexicon, similar sort of thing. Oh. Um I thought this um, film took place at night time, but it didn't, did it? It took place in the daytime. I think that's just saying that Canada's dark in the winter. Mm. I fucking hate winter. Yeah. Oh. I think he's great. He was in another one of my In the Beams a few months ago with Frodo Baggins. Mm. Oh, I yeah. I his name either. Uh, Elijah Wood? Yeah, that's the fella. He's good. I like if him. anyone would... <laughs> Elijah <Wood. laughs> ah! So anyway, I, I suppose we can kind of wrap this up in a minute, I think. But well, I'm not prompting anything there, James. Uh, look, it's a very refreshing film, I think. Um, but why like, did everyone swarm the, to the doctors? Why? What, what is his link? Because I wanted to get better. Oh, ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
that's where you I've, where I've been going wrong. Yeah, I've been to the milkman talk tomorrow. A little bit just before we start. Showing him my Veruca is that like, I'm a milkman, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> the, the, the soundscape, the audio for this is phenomenal, and that's the thing what? that sells it. Well, what you hear. But it's, you don't see anything. It's what you hear. You're listening most of the time, aren't you? Could okay. be a radio play. Do you think phenomenal is quite strong? Well, I think so. But I, I think it really when the when he's kind of describing what's happening with them eat. You know, um, there's that. Is there a kid or something? And it's yeah. There's it's not Bobby Fisher, but it's uh, yeah, Bobby Fisher, the third kid of whatever is. Yeah. Yeah, it paints a picture with words. <laughs> All right. Um, talking of words, has anyone got any memorable lines? I've got one. Uh, oh my god, you're gonna weep me soon, aren't you? <laughs> that was a really good line. I remember that one. That stood out for me. You dick. Uh, there's there's one earlier by um, Grant Massey when he says, "I'm trying to piss a few people off because that's how it's done." <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, well done, Jasper. Yeah, yeah, well, well done, Jasper. Jasper. Yeah, let's see what you pull out the bag next, shall we? Well, he was talking to me. The idea is basically Elizabeth the first, and she can just talk to fairies, and it's kind of like an Elizabeth Elizabeth first. Look, Whitney, do you know fairies. what he's talking about? And I was like, "That's oh. a great idea." Have you ever heard? <gasps> of... <sighs> Jesus, that works. <laughs> I'm gonna give it seven for performance. Is that your is that your pubic bone on the floor? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> performance is seven, Laurie. Uh, six. Seven. Uh, effect, Laurie. Five. Point of uh, six. There aren't many, but well, I'm they were quite good. Audio is an effect, and I'm oh, it is. Ah, very good. Um, yeah. Wyndham, plot. Plot. Is eight. Nine for me. I'm going eight. Oh. Um, rewatch factor. Six. Laurie. I'll go six, yeah. I'm going to go four. Um, direction. Laurie. Um, six. Six. Seven. Um, cinematography. Wyndham. I've got seven. Oh, I've nice. got six. Uh, I've got five. <laughs> um, sound and music. I've got seven. Laurie. Sound and music. You loved it. So that's a seven is phenomenal. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, six. Uh, seven. Seven is phenomenal. Though, actually, it's a great number. Right, originality, Laurie. Oh, great. Seven. Well, eight. Nine. Enjoyability. Wyndham. Six. Ooh. Eight. Nine. It wasn't your turn. Oh. Life changing past or present. One. Zero. Four. Well, now, actually, no, screw it. Five, actually. Oh. Five. All right. well, I give it a 69. <laughs> There's no jokes there. And why does 69 get all the fun? What's I give it 96. 59. I just think you're 10 out with your scoring, Wyndham. That's all. Why do you think that is? you're always like 10 lower than I am. <laughs> uh, Laurie? Oh, we've got a couple of 10 numbers. I thought it was going to be Welsh when I heard the title of Pontypool. Yeah. Please about that. You're forgiven. <laughs> 57. 57. Oh, right. What's that then? The number. Sixty-one point six recurring. Oh, oh wow. again. We're, nailing. Right. We're back, guys. We're well, back. <laughs> that puts it just below Brazil, but above Event Horizon. Way above Event Horizon. Oh, what a sack of dick It's that not. Is. It's very good. Everyone says Sack a dick. That. Everyone says sack it's really dick. good. Sack a dick. Sack a dick. 51.6. Right. So it's number 53 in our major sco uh, scoreboard. Um, just below the Running Man and Edward Scissorhands, but above 12 Monkeys and Event Horizon. So there you go.
Cool. Ooh. Well done, Jasper and the Pontypool team. Well done. Right, so whose turn is it? Not mine. It's yours, I think. Yes, it is. Hi, Oddy. <laughs> you just toy with us, didn't you? What would you do if you had the power of a wear word? I'd make you take your shoes and socks off, James. And just live. <laughs> I've like, got his shoes and socks. Just off. live like that. That'd be a waste of a word. I'm bad for. Oh, it. it's not like a one-time only. <laughs> oh, right. you, can, you can use it all the time. Don't no, while I'm concentrating, while I'm getting into my Sorry. ball bag. Yeah, please pick a. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no! Is it number six or is it number nine? Which one have we had before? <laughs> we might not have had either before. Well, it's the actual the category that you've assigned to that number. That's that's the actual pickly bit. It's number six. Because it's oh, it could be either. Well, we were talking about this, the sixty-nine conundrum. Oh, this is going to be tough. I'm going to Isn't choose it? my favourite. Right. So what's six? It's none of your business. Oh. Okay. Well, look, six is two thousand six. It's too close to two thousand and eight. So yeah, too boring. I'm going to do Mars attacks. Ooh. Right, okay, yeah, fucks. Uh, I've, I've got two. I'm not overly happy with it, but go on. Right, we're back in the room. Um, the title was When Aliens Attack. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was just messing with you. <laughs> right, Mars Attacks. Um, Wyndham, what is your first nomination? My first nomination is taking the Mars element of Mars Attacks. It is the original Total Recall. Yeah. Ooh, Get, your Get your ass to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. Laurie. I'm going to say, right, so I know we have touched on this film in one episode, but we haven't properly oh, all sat down together and reviewed it. Life Force. Have we reviewed it? I think we No. Have. No, we haven't <sighs> properly reviewed this, it. This is the Space Vampires, right? This is we, Space Vampires. We, we've, we've definitely watched that reviewed in it. detail. We've all yeah. watched it because... We oh, have. Re- we must have. Yeah, we have. It was a side salad have. in one of our. It, oh, it wasn't because God. we all, we wouldn't have watched that shit otherwise. It'll be on your uh, list. I know, but it's not in alphabetical order, is it? All right then. Annihilation. <laughs> I know nothing about that. What is it? Hey, what the the relatively recent one? Relatively recent one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to zoom in on it on the film. Uh, I'm gonna go for Mission to Mars by Brian De Palma. Is that a song? Yeah. <laughs> and Laurie. <laughs> John Carter. Oh for fuck's sake, why did none of you choose Invaders from Mars, the seminal classic sci-fi horror film from the 1950s? Should I say Invaders from Mars, the no. seminal <laughs> the only reason I put, should put that category in, Invaders from Mars is an awesome film. You're going to have to find another to another category when you're suggesting them that you I'll can tell you what, we'll have it as a side salad. We'll have it as a side salad. Should we all watch it as well? No. Maybe. I will. I'm going to. Well, I'll probably watch it because I, I like it. Right, I'm going to choose Total Recall. Yeah. And... Oh. I, I haven't seen Annihilation or John Carter. Uh, I'm going to go for... Laurie, go on, you choose. Which one of your films would you like me to watch? Does it really have to be about Mars? <laughs> uh, John Carter, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I thought I'd slip Annihilation in. It's a really good film. Annihilation is a really, 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 really good film. So anyway, it's topical because um, I'm people like trying to get to Mars at the moment as we speak. Absolutely, yeah, we, naked yeah. with long hair and right. insects everywhere. Ah, oh, lovely. Right, well, that'll be our summer special, or someone will probably be over at this rate. Um, so let's wrap it up and call it a day, shall yeah, we? Let's, let's call that. Smell my dinner. Oh, smell mm. my dinner. That sounds aggressive. That's wrong. Yeah. Put your shoes and socks on, James. To go to bed. Yeah. We'll do. Pick up your pelvis bone. It's disgusting. Ah. See you later, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.